Kia ora. Adrian Rurafa. <laughs> um, so I want to uh, address the, um, both the establishment of, uh, of Whānau Trust uh, and the operations of Whānau Trust. And so I just want to take up um, uh, on something that the Minister said and relate to Clause 61.3. Uh, which seems to me to be saying that um, if a Whano Trust in its declaration does not want uh, land or interest to be sold, then they have to declare it as part of the declaration. Now, given what the Minister has, uh, has said, oh, sorry, uh, Clause 61, subclause 3. Um, now, I understand that, that, that the um, clauses around the disposal of land is coming up in a later part, in part four, I think it is. Um, but it seems to me that if it is in fact that uh, shareholders and beneficiaries um, must be consulted and uh, must uh, vote on whether or not land is, uh, is to be sold, then what is the purpose of having this line within this clause? Uh, because it, it would seem to me that that is redundant, that the, the, the Fano Trust, based on what the Minister's uh, answer to a previous question was, uh, was uh, is, um, does not apply to this clause, that this, this clause is basically saying that if uh, a trust or if the shareholders uh, want to, that they can, uh, in the declaration, allow or enable the trust to sell la that land or sell their interest. And yet, uh, there are uh, situations or clauses that are coming up uh, in later parts that the Minister has said that, um, that the, the beneficiaries and the shareholders must vote on, on such a thing. So what is the purpose of having this as part uh, of the declaration? Because it would uh, <coughs> appear to me to be inconsistent with uh, what the minister has said and, inconsist and, and totally redundant. Uh, so I also wanted to um, pick up on um, and refer to clause 59.1 uh, and the nature and the two ways in which um, Pānau Trust can be um, established and a declaration uh, made. I, I just think that it's, uh, it also seems to me that um, it isn't as straightforward as, as we're led to believe. I think, um, as the uh, Māori Land Court judges um, um, said in their submission, that it would require a relatively sophisticated document. Now, um, reference, reference again, please. Uh, that's um, Clause 59.1. Thank you. Uh, and... I just think that uh, on, on that sort of uh, situation, then, then it may be more cumbersome for uh, a Whano to go through to, uh, to make that declaration. Um, uh, further on, still with um, Whano uh, Trust, uh, one of the major... Uh, uh, let me see. Yes, so I know this is coming up also in parts uh, uh, seven, but the alienation or the the selling of the um, uh, the trust under clause. Oh, oh, it actually comes up later on, but it is relevant to these clauses in establishing Fano Trust, and that is. Re relating to what I um, said before in 61, clause 61, that the, um, it does impact on the ability to use uh, those clauses later on in, the, um, in this bill. So clause um, 
66 uh, sub clause 1, uh, which entitles the beneficiary of a whānau uh, trust to. Mr. Chair? Uh, Peter Paraone. This uh, part of the committee stage. Mr. Chair.